Recording started. Well, well, well. Good evening, GCA champions. Welcome to my uh, learning coaches and some of my students that are in this session live and are and, and that are on our live YouTube stream. Welcome, welcome. Um, this is our December parent meeting, and before we begin and get started, please, I just want everyone to give me a smiley face or a green check if you can hear me okay. Am I coming in good? All right, those checks are climbing. Again, welcome. I just want to say a quick little note um, for everyone that is logging in. Please, please, please make sure that you are logging in with your correct um, first and last name. Um, if you are a, a member of any um, committee that we have on GCA, definitely um, share your committee that you are in, or if you're a staff member, share that in your um, in the way that you log in. We want to make sure that everyone is being respectful when they do log in. So um, please make sure you're logging in with your first and last name, or, uh, last initial. And if you are a staff member, um, identifying that you're a staff member. And if you are on any council, identifying that you are on any council. Thank you so much. Well, my name is Veronica Opani, and I am your middle school family engagement coordinator. And we thank you for your attendance this evening. I hope everyone is staying warm and getting ready for the big break that we have going on. Um, and tonight, I hope that you will enjoy. It's going to be short so that you guys can be able to enjoy your parent universities for your different schools. So I want to go ahead and get us started for this evening. Here is going to be, here is what we're going to discuss on our agenda tonight. We will talk about, let me get my pointer out. We're going to be talking about dates and deadlines to remember. Of course, you guys have been getting communication from your teachers and your school leaders about dates and deadlines. So we're just going to give you a quick reminder in tonight's meeting. Of course, our infamous attendance reminders, what, where you should be um, by now and how um, you need to get there. Um, preventing that mid-year drag. Of course, we're all experiencing that mid-year drag, so we have some tips and we'd like to share, uh, or we would like for you all to share some tips on how to prevent that mid-year drag, right, that's going on. Um, and then we will dismiss for our parent university. Um, Ms. Christy Howard is going to share with us how we can get into our parent university rooms easy um, and get ready to hear the wonderful information that they have going on there. All right, so who all is ready for that break? Give me a green check. Yes, let me go ahead and give a, a green check. I am ready for that break. So end of the first semester is December 20th. Please, 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 everybody, write this down or save those emails. Remember, the end of the semester is December 20th. And I'm going to tell you why this is very, very important, right? Um, so winter break begins on the 21st. So I know you guys are going to log off as soon as possible um, and start your winter break on December 21st. Our uh, staff returns January 3rd. Staff will be returning January 3rd, while our students and families return January 7th. So you guys have a good two-week break to rest up and come back rejuvenated and ready to go to finish out that school year. So semester deadlines for our elementary school families. All of your assignments and lessons must be completed by Wednesday, January 2nd. So you do have for our elementary school family some time over the break to complete all of those assignments. Your teachers should have sent and your school leaders um, as well as Ms. Christy Howard should have sent all of those information about your assignments, how to complete it, where to go. So if you are having any questions, please reach out to your teachers. Um, to ask on how you can go about doing that. For middle school, where my middle school students, all of our work needs to be done by December 20th, 4 p.m. So for middle school, it's different. We want you to get that and start working now and get all of that work by December 20th. If you have any questions, please reach out to your, uh, your teachers um, and they will help you on all of that. So middle school students, we got to get that work in sooner than later, December 20th. For my high school students, 
Now, listen very carefully. All students can complete coursework in the OHS, so your online high school, all the way up until January 2nd by 11.59 p.m. But if you want full compliancy points right here, full compliancy points, you have got to get that work in by December 20th, okay? So for my high school students, you have the opportunity to complete all your coursework by um, January 2nd. However, if you want to get those full compliancy points, which is 10% um, uh, 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 weight over your overall grade, you have to get that in by December 20th. If you have any questions, again, we want you to reach out to your teachers. We want to make sure that you are clear on all of those semester deadlines so that you are getting the desired grade that you want to get for the semester. So make sure that you reach out to your teachers and that you are following up on any of those emails if they're sending out um, any updates about assignments, um, so on and so forth. Please reach out to all your teachers um, to get clarification if you are confused. Um, down here we have a little caveat and this applies to all schools. All map testing and interim assessments must be completed by the deadline which has been communicated by your teacher. Again, if you're not sure, let's reach out to those teachers, right? Um, make sure that we are getting the desired grades that we want um, for the semester. So if you are unsure, please reach out to your teachers no matter what grade you're in for clarification. All right, our wonderful, wonderful attendance. Now, I'm going to do it again. Now be honest, give me a green check if you're entered your attendance today. I should see a lot of green checks. If not, make a little reminder, put up a, another screen to get that attendance in um, because um, we want to make sure that everybody is on the same page as far as how many days and hours they should have for the school year um, by December 20th. That is the end of the semester. I know you guys just love hearing about attendance, so um, let's just take a look at how many days that you should have by December 20th. You should have 87 days by December 20th, and I'm going to show you guys what that looks like, where you can go to find that. It's very easy, very simple, it's in your face. So for my kindergartner kiddos, we should have a total amount of hours by December 20th. So if you don't have these hours now, why is that? It's because it's not December 20th yet, right? So we should have 391.5 hours logged in for my kindergartners, okay? For my first through third graders, because you need to have five hours per day of school, you should have 435 hours logged in by December 20th. So, and then for my um, fourth through twelfth graders, since we are to do 5.5 hours per day, you should have 478.5 hours logged in by December 20th. And let me show you guys what that looks like. So, we have our student, Ethan, and we are on December 13th. Ethan has a total amount of 478 0.5 hours. That's a little bit more, but that's okay. It's either you have more hours or um, or the exact amount. And Ethan has 81 days um, that he's been in school, so by December 20th, that will say 87 days. If you have any questions on how to do this, how to log it, how to go back, put in your hours. Please, please, please reach out to your family success liaisons, your SSL. Or you, you can also reach out to your teachers or your family engagement coordinator, and we'll support you on this effort. But by, um, let me go back. So by December 20th, we'll have 87 days of school that we have been in and that has been in session. And for my kindergartners, we should have um, 391.5 hours. For my first through third graders, we should have 435 hours. And then for my um, fourth through fifth graders, we should have 478.5 hours, and that is by December 20th. All right, so now I'm going to let our new I mean, high school family engagement coordinator um, take it from here. Her name is Ms. Michelle Gilliard. Michelle, take it away. 
Hello, and good evening to my fellow GCA champions. How you guys feeling tonight? Give me a smiley face. Give me a smiley face if you can hear me. I see a couple of smileys. Good deal, good deal. There you are. Get into the groove of it. It's the middle of the week, and we're all getting through this together. How do you prevent mid-year drag. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We are at mid-year and of course we want to hear all of these great things that all of our learning coaches are doing out there to help their students get through this mid-year point. So what I want you to do is open up a separate screen on your web browser and go to www.menti.com and use the code 145150. I'm going to give you guys a, um, a few seconds to get your website up. 145150 <clears throat> and enter code 145150 at www.menti.com. And we're going to application share so we can see all of your fabulous answers. I know you learning coaches out there have some great ideas. Every time we get on one of our learning coach live help or when we're meeting in person, you guys always give me great ideas. So please feel free to share. We're going to take some time so we can really get to know what you're doing to help motivate your students. You can also chat, top that answer into the chat box if you don't want to bring up the separate mentee school. It's okay, Ms. Robinson. Sometimes that just happens. All right, so how do you prevent mid-year drag? Oh, there's some great ones. Take a break. Yes, that is a fabulous one. Get some exercise. Take a break from the screens. That is fabulous. Let them play soft, relaxed music while sitting. Yes, that is a great one, especially if you have auditory processing students. Learners, the students that learn better via auditory, they love having that classical for studying. We use that in our house all the time. Take it day by day and sometimes hour by hour or minute by minute. Write a checklist and mark it off as task list completed. Let me get a big smiley face for that one. Love task list. I'm a task list oriented person. So I, <laughs> I use that one quite often. <clears throat> Excuse me, snacks. Snacks is a great one. Play educational games like memory cards and sight words. Yes, absolutely. Those are great. Again, you guys are using some great uh, differentiation with your uh, lesson plans and don't even realize it. Those are great ways to teach to the way that your student learns. So good job. Take classes outside. Me time. Oh, gosh, could I use some me time? Oh, my goodness. Uh, visiting different museums. I like that, too. And take me time. I see that, Terry. I see you there in the chat box. That's what I'm talking about. Get some me time, too. You never want to allow yourself and your student to overstress while you're doing your coursework because think about it. If you're stressed out and your student's stressed out, it's going to be really tough to keep moving forward. So take a break. Breathe. Get them engaged. Naps and coffee. Okay, I'm good with that. <laughs> Stay calm and do your best. I love the idea of dance between classes. Yes, we do that. We play the uh, I'm happy song at my house sometimes. I'll just turn it on sometimes and my girls will just go crazy. They know it's time to uh, shake a little. <clears throat> Take them to an activity that still lets them learn. The museum, aquarium, good job. Be encouraging. <clears throat> yes, that is a great one. <clears throat> Give them time to earn points for that PlayStation for Christmas time. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, ladies. My voice is trying to go out on me. Uh, we try to drink more energizing drinks and eat even healthier. Yes. Um, it's too easy to have that drag feeling. <clears throat> Some more hot chocolate and their favorite snacks. I love that. Meditate. Yes. Take a moment to breathe for a second. Um, work hard, concentrate, and pay attention. I always remind them to do its best. Exactly. Take a breath and breathe. One of the things I'm seeing frequently here is making sure you're encouraging your students. A lot of your responses um, are geared towards that. Yeah, encourage your students. Let them see those incremental progresses. It doesn't have to, they don't have to go from an F to an A, right? You just want to see those incremental processes, um, increases with your students. Let them see that they're doing better. Don't just wait for that A. You get what I'm saying? So enjoy the ride. Keep up with your coursework in the first part of the year. Yes, tell me about it. I've got one right now that's um, stressing out because she got a little bit behind. Just keep moving forward. I love that one. I really and truly do. <clears throat> keep moving forward. Get them engaged. 
Um, I love the me time. That was a great one. Leticia says, I suggest Zen music. It is calming and very relaxing, which will get the kids ready to work again. Yes, absolutely. That was fabulous. You guys were on it. I hope you all, all had an opportunity. You may not have been able to write those down as quickly because we were. Um, they do pop across the screen pretty fast. But just sit down and think about some of those things that you can use with your students. And um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed Minty. Give me a green check if you love doing that via Minty. Wasn't that engaging? Yes, I love Minty. Yes, absolutely. Because we don't want to be the only one talking. We want your input. We want to know how you're feeling. This is family engagement. That requires both of us. So let's talk a little bit about preventing mid-year drag. These are just a couple of ideas that we came up with. And again, if you have some more, you can continue to um, sorry, type those into the chat box. Know your student. Who knows your student better than you do? No one, OK? You notice those facial expressions. You notice when they're getting a little bit restless. Just think about the things that they're doing throughout the day. Get to know them. What motivates them? Where are they hitting that pressure point? It's time to make a change. Exactly, Bella. We know our students. And we have to be aware of those cues that they're giving us. Set goals together. The key word there is together. Set those goals together. You want your student to feel included. You want them to know that their um, opinions are valued and appreciated. And they're more likely to get on board when you're working those out together. Uh, the third one, create a schedule. Yes, we're in an online school. Yes, our students are school from home. But we need to have some type of flexible schedule. Our students still need to know what's expected of them. They still need to know that their schoolwork and getting everything done is very important. So please create a schedule. Yes, it can be flexible, but have something. Uh, the next one is create reminders. I'm really big on this one. I use Outlook Task Manager and set flags. I call it flags and tags on almost everything to remind myself to do things um, and have those pop-up reminders. One of the things Veronica was talking about a moment ago with the attendance reminders. Someone mentioned to me, set an Outlook reminder for your attendance so you don't forget. Because I'm a learning coach, too, um, and I forget sometimes. So create those reminders. Um, the next one, hold each other accountable. Yes, that goes back to setting those goals together. We all want to be held accountable. I think it's great for us to be held accountable for the goals that we set. Our children want to see that success. Remember I talked a moment ago about those incremental um, successes? You want to go back and hold each other accountable and say, look, babe, you were able to do this. When we set this plan together, you were like, ma, really? But then it kicks in. So hold each other accountable. Next, reach out to our teachers uh, for support. GCA, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a GCA employee, but GCA has the best teachers. Uh, my students have two girls at GCA. They started in third grade. They're 11th graders, and they'll be graduating next year. And we're still here because of the teachers. And that's really what it's all about. They will help you. They will reach out to you. Send them an email. Let them know what's going on. <clears throat> Not that you it's bad to wait until after you know, you've gotten issues. But if you're noticing your students starting to fall behind, or you're noticing you've got something coming up, um, or you've got a vacation, or something's happening, reach out to your teachers and say, hey, I'm noticing Johnny's struggling with this. Can you give me some additional resources, or give me some ideas on ways I can help support my student? Keep, stay engaged with your teachers. Don't wait until you're you know, 20 lessons behind to say, hey, I need help. OK? So just then, they're here. And encourage ownership. It's kind of like kind of ties back into that creating that flexible schedule and holding each other accountable. Encourage ownership. One of the things I do with my daughters is they sit down every morning and they write out what they're supposed to do for each one of their courses. And then I'll go through periodically through the day and look through their folders and see what they've done. But that um, allowed them to take ownership of their schoolwork. It's allowed them to become independent learners. Yes, they still need their learning coaches help as they're progressing, but they're taking ownership and being held accountable for what they're supposed to do. Exactly. Just um, and keep um, going back through that. You may have to do a little refresher. You notice when we got started kindergarten. I don't know if you remember that in elementary school, they read through the rules several times. You know, first day of school, it was every day. But as the year progresses, sometimes they forget to reread those rules, and the students forget. So go back. 
and take um, take a look and just make sure you um, are staying accountable to prevent that mid-year drag. More ways to prevent drag. Here's a great one. Focus on what your student is learning, not about the grades or the test scores. Remember, grades and test scores change, right? And they will change as your student focuses on what they're learning versus just focusing on the grades. That is a huge one. Help your student organize schoolwork and assignments. That is a, another big one. Again, we talked about this at, um, on the other slide. Yes, we are an online um, charter school, and our students have flexibility. But our students still need some accountability and some ownership, um, and they need to know what's expected of them. So help them organize their schoolwork and their assignments. Work together to come up with a plan that works for both of you. Keep it student-centered, what works for your student, because every one of our children are different, and, and you've got to just figure out what works for your student. Celebrate achievements, no matter how small. Remember, a little while ago, incremental successes, whether they be small or large. We're not thinking about going from an F to an A, right? We're just trying to get above the F, right? And sometimes you got to take baby steps. Who remembers What About Bob? That's one of my favorite movies. Baby steps, baby steps. Uh, focus on your student's strength. Yeah, that's part of the encouragement portion of the routine. You want to make sure that you're talking to your student and you're focusing on what, what they're great at. You don't want to constantly be saying, you know, Johnny, you're failing sp spelling. You're having such a hard time in spelling. We need to work in spelling. What are you doing on spelling? Johnny's going to get sick of it. <laughs> yeah, Johnny's not going to be encouraged by that. So focus on their strengths also. And don't give up, no matter how hard. We've had uh, stressful days ourselves. Our students have stressful days. Think about those mornings where you as a learning coach, sometimes you just wake up and you're just like, I don't feel like it. Sometimes our children work up that way, wake up that way too. So you want to have in the back of your head, as their learning coach and as their guide, ways that you can help motivate them. Um, and don't give up. And a post positive inspirations around the house. Those are really good. You know, maybe take the side of the cereal box that slid in and uh, write in, you're great or you're fabulous or seeds today. When they pull that cereal box down, they see that little sticky note in there. You know, they don't have to have a lunch box that's going to brick and mortar that they open at lunchtime where they can get a positive little um, note from their parents throughout the day. So post positive inspirations throughout the house. And now I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Chrissy, our elementary school family engagement coordinator. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ms. Michelle. Good evening, Georgia Cyber Academy champions. It is so good to see you guys in here this evening. And I just want to give you a little update about what to expect for January. So upcoming parent meetings, we've got an awesome Technology Tuesday, computer maintenance, how to keep those computers running nice and smooth so we can make sure that we are in our classes and not having any trouble with the coursework. We've got some tips and tricks for you, so come check that out Tuesday, January 18th, I'm sorry, January 8th at 7 p.m. Then we've got our district hall parent meeting. So we will have uh, district leaders here to inform you about what's going on in the school and also giving you some tips on engaging undermotivated students. So that's coming up on Thursday, January 17th. And then um, we've also got our, that's it for this evening except for our parent university. But before you go, if you could please um, fill out the attendance survey. I'm going to put it in the chat box. And also, I'm going to push it out for you. So it should pop open in your preferred web browser. So give me just a second. It is active on the screen as well. So we do appreciate your attendance tonight. And uh, so if you could just take a moment to fill that out for us, we would appreciate that. And I'm going to have it open up in your web browser. And then we're going to dismiss to parent universities. We are super excited about parent university tonight. All of our schools, elementary, middle, and high school, are going to be discussing how you can help your student support your student in math. And I know that uh, math can be very challenging. So we've got some tips and tricks from elementary, middle, and high school as well. So if you could just take a moment to complete that attendance survey, we appreciate that. And I will let you know how we are going to go to our elementary, middle, and high school parent university rooms. The links are active on the board. You can click on the link. We're going to allow five minutes to transition into those rooms. 
Um, if you came in a little bit late this evening, no worries. We have recorded this session. It will be posted on the GCA events calendar by tomorrow evening, so you can ca catch that if you miss anything or if you just want to review you can do that. So we are going to be transitioning over. We're going to allow five minutes and we'll put that on the clock to go over to elementary, middle, and high school so you can get tips and tricks directly from the school about how to support your student in math. So thank you guys so much for coming this evening. We always appreciate you. We know that you work hard and your students work very hard. So thank you so much and we hope to see you in Parent University. Hey, Christy, sorry about that. We do have um, someone that, um, Ms. Beth, she's one of our parent advisory council members, and she would like to um, give a quick um, reminder for our families about Capital Day, and I'm going to let her uh, take it away. And Ms. Beth, if it could be really short and sweet, that would be great. Um, I will be very, can you hear me? I will be short and sweet. Uh, Capital Day is January 30th. It will allow a, a number of opportunities, and um, we do have it set up so that all children can attend, and we encourage every child to attend. You can apply to speak uh, before the State Charter School Commission. We want to get as many of our kids' faces in front of them uh, as possible, as well as um, we have uh, an opportunity for you to meet your legislators and potentially uh, sign up to be a page at the Senate or the House. So please attend to support the recharter effort with the State Charter School Commission. Thank you, Ms. Beth. Again, that date is January 30th. Please, please, please. We will be sending out some information. Um, um, next month about uh, Capital Day where you can go all of those details so please support your school and um, go to Capital Day if you do have time. I do want to shout out to our live streamers. We had about 59 live streamers uh, tonight so thank you for um, coming no matter what, um, what was necessary. You were on and you were engaged with us. Um, again, we are set. We have set the timer to um, five minutes. It's now two minutes in. Please, please, please go to your respective parent universities. If you have multiple students in multiple grade levels and in multiple uh, schools, please choose the one that you see is important. Um, we're all talking about math this evening. So if you have a student, um, let's say a middle school student that's struggling in math, go to that middle school. Um, parent university if you have multiple students. So thank you again everyone and if we do not um, talk to you before the break uh, on behalf of the family engagement team, have a great break and we will see you next year ready and uh, for the end of the school year, ready for testing right. Um, so we will see you next year and thank you all again for being so committed to your students and so committed to your schools. Um, and attending our parent sessions. Thank you all. If you have any questions in the chat box that did not get answers, answered, please, um, I forgot to put our contact information. Christy, Michelle, if you guys can also load in your email addresses, please email us. We did not want to uh, ignore you, um, but you know how it is. Sometimes when you're trying to do a meeting, you kind of skip over some of those questions that you um, know the answers to, but Definitely email us and we can get those answers for you. Thank you so much and have a really, really nice day or night. Recording stopped.